that cat. A week had passed since Neville's encounter with Donald's duck. The other engines had stopped their teasing, but Emily continued tauntily when she had the chance. Come on, Neville, she said. Your passengers are going to be late and stop your cracking. And whenever Neville tried to argue, Emily just says, It's no use being ducking the issue, she said. All you have to do is be crackers about it, she said. Good luck. Good luck and be crackers about it, she said. And she puffed. And she puffed away laughing. Immature, that's what she is, said Neville crossly. The other engines have dropped it. Why can't she? She'll get tired of it soon, said Neville's driver. But he was trying not to grin. Soon Neville was puffing into the station at the docks. He even buffered up to his couch. But unfortunately, Neville didn't know he was earlier. Normally, he would have to wait. Normally, Duck would have to wait for him at the station docks. Soon, Neville began to grow impatient. Hurry up, Duck, he complained. Soon, Neville's driver looked at his watch. We, we're, normally, we're normally there before Duck arrives at 10 o'clock, he said. So we're a few minutes earlier than in this time. Soon Neville began to grow impatient. By the time the clock struck, struck to 10 o'clock, Neville grew impatient still. That Duck, he, he went on until he heard his whistle. At last, Duck arrived with his coaches and Neville's passengers inside. At last, at last, Neville was ready. You're early today, Neville, replied Duck. What's with the hurry? he asked. Neville was about to say when the guard blew his whistle and he gave, and he gave his passengers a rough ride. Come on, you, he said to his coach. Ow, went the coach. Be gentle, but Neville took no notice. But soon Neville didn't know why. Normally the fresh countryside would brighten up his spirit, but still Neville was in a bad mood and didn't want to know why the, why the countryside was not making him feel happy at all. But still, he was thinking about getting his own back at Emily. At last, Neville made it back, back in time to the station docks. He was, the passengers were happy to, happy to be back. Neville, Neville was uncoupled to his couch and decided to take a rest at the siding, at the siding in front of the, the station docks. After his coach was shunted back to the carriage shed, Neville was still dozing in the siding when she was rudely awoken by the sound of Emily's loud voice. Quack, 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 said Emily sarcastically. Neville had had enough and decided to get back at Emily, but he didn't know why. The next day later, he met Douglas at the signet area. Douglas soon, Douglas soon began feel, feeling full of questions, questions with Neville. Hey, she said, haven't you heard that the sta the, the station dock masters, masters cat is, is new to the, new to the station docks? Haven't you heard? No said Neville. I didn't know the, sta the station master at the docks had a, had the cat. It's actually a black cat, said, said Douglas. My, dri my, driver does my driver apparently takes a dislike to her. He thinks she gives him, him bad, bad luck every time she crosses a ladder or some, or some stairs. He sometimes call it super... He, Sometimes call it stupid superstition, she said. She said, oh really, said Neville. By the time, by the time Douglas left to collect his train, 
It gave Neville an idea. Right, she said. I'll, I'll play a trick on Emily on that one, she said, and smiled with relief. Later, Neville met Emily at the station docks. He, told e he soon told Emily about the black cat, but Emily was not convinced. Oh, really, she said. I don't think what you're saying might be super might be stupid superstition, she said. Oh, look, Emily, interrupted Neville. Emily was surprised. Coming, walking to, walking next to, crawling next to Emily was a, was a, was a big black cat. <coughs> Wild Emily. Oh, Emily, said Neville sarcastically. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I didn't think this day for me to see you scared would come. And indeed, it did. N Emily, Emily shivered when the cat bro brushed all over her buffer beam. Oh dear, Emily, said Neville. What tragic. And he puffed away, puffed away smiling in secret. Emily was... Emily shivered. When the cat had gone, the guard blew his whistle, and Emily steamed out of the station, feeling very worried. But on the way to Farquhar, Emily was still worried about the black cat. She was so, she was so worried that she went up a hill, and then there was trouble. She heard the, she heard the, she heard the sound of a coach getting derailed. Her driver had already stopped her to, to see what had happened. Behind the train, a coach had just been derailed, and the passengers had jumped clear. The guard, the guard came out to check if they were all right. Soon the coach was shunted into a siding, and the remaining passengers did the best they could to, did the best they could to get into the remaining two coaches. Emily was worried about about what had happened. It might have been that black cat. She, she gulped. What if it wasn't stupid superstition? She said. And indeed she, and indeed she remembered. That was stupid superstition, she said, and she carried on. Derailing has always happened, she thought, as she, as she finished her long journey with the express. And after she had finished her express, it was time for Emily to go back to the docks to help Frank assist with some shunting. Another delivery has just arrived a minute ago, said Frank, um, and you are to help me take it. Righty-o, said Emily. She was determined and was ready to help. Together the two took it in turns to take the delivery to, to whichever place to whichever place it was going to until until a few moments later Emily was tired and started sleeping at the same siding all, all afternoon. She was still dozing when she didn't notice that Frank was coming down the line with a with a truck from the Blue Mountain Quarry. He travelled too fast as he went as he as he went into the same siding where Emily was sleeping at, and he, and the truck bumped Emily hard. Emily woke up with a, with a start of some, of some flying stones banging all over her. Ouch! She shouted. Watch where you're going, you clumsy diesel. Until, until just then, Emily heard the heard a banging sound, and so did her driver and fireman. Her, her, her boiler had just been, had just been poked a hole by some fl flying china clay stones. Poor Emily, poor Emily had dripping water out, out of her boiler, and she couldn't move at all. Soon Frank had to take the truck away. Then Emily 
spoke to her driver about the black cat. It was that stupid black cat's fault, said. It was that stupid black cat's fault, she said. If, if she hadn't have brushed all over my buffers, none of this would have happened. Really? laughed her driver. A black cat caused all this, he said. You must have been hearing silly rumours. Rumours today, said said her driver, but I think what happened to you happened to you a minute ago would teach you a lesson from te from teasing Neville about Donald's duck. I guess so, said Emily. She felt she felt up and down and looked at her buffers. In the meantime, Frank had to pull had to pull Emily to the sheds. He was coupled he was coupled to Emily's front and with and with and with poor Emily with a with a hole on her boiler felt humiliated and pulled by the and pulled by the great superior front. That night at the sheds it was Emily's turn to be teased by the other engines. They all began to laugh. Emily said shut up. But whenever that, but whenever she tells them to, they all just laughed. Really, said Duck. First, Neville being scared of a duck, and now Emily being being afraid of a cat. What has this railway got into? I do not know. Smiled Frank. Soon the three engines laughed. Soon Emily felt felt very silly indeed but it really served her right in the end.